Hello everybody, this is ZigZagZog coming to you from somewhere in this world and we're back to continue our playthrough of Empire Total War featuring Darth Maud and the 40 unit save version. And uh, we left off with lots of unfinished business going on. We got uh, Venice over here uh, making a move down on one of our island territories in the Americas. Uh, but we also have some unresolved business up here with Württemberg and I'm thinking we're just gonna move. Our army isn't 100% healed, so I'm thinking what I'll do is at least get them blockaded in so they can't really do any major repairs and things to their forces there while we get back to full strength prior to our attack. Um, and kind of handle it that way. So let's move our army out. We're gonna move everybody out. I think we can afford, um, pretty sure we can afford to take them all out. Let's see, regiment a horse, and no, I cannot afford a general at this time. So uh, let's just take the whole army, and we will start the blockade uh, to gain back Alsace-Lorraine uh, over here in the city of Strasbourg. And uh, right as it stands right now, we barely, barely, barely uh, have less soldiers in them. So if we are able to uh, recruit some more, and ooh, some of their cavalry units they have here are extremely weakened, but then they still have uh, some full, pretty full strength. So they've been, they've been healing up. So yeah, it is time we blockade them in there for a turn at least. Uh, we can always hit the surrender button, but you know nothing ever happens with that unless you vastly outnumber them. So let's continue our siege here. Uh, just to try and prevent them from replenishing any more. Um, I probably should have moved my rake in first. Um, so where else maybe do I want to send him? Do I need to see what's going on? I'm thinking uh, maybe he'll head down towards Venice next. Alright. Um, also... We have a new, having taken over Portugal last episode, uh, they, it came with something uh, I didn't deal with yet. So we're going to go deal with it, and that is a new school um, right there. And let's go see what we can have this one produce or, or research. And I think what we're going to do is put a second school on uh, naval research, and we'll work on the sextant to get our movement range on the campaign map increased by 10 percent that's that's not a bad thing to do right now something i wouldn't mind at times being able to move just a little farther and we have a little uh cabinet shuffle that we haven't done i think i think we've passed another turn where we can look at uh shifting out another ho-hum at least at least none of them are disaster but let's get rid of the ho-hummers we'll start with uh York down in India first, see if we can't find someone better. And we don't. Uh, Adam, you're no better. Uh, let's just see if you have anything. Nah, that's just religious zeal. So no change, boring. <laughs> I want a better cabinet. Let's get going. <laughs> Speed it up, guys. And then finally, uh, before we move on and do anything else, I also would like... Um, well, two things. Let's go see if we can. Can we afford any additional units? And what are we able to recruit? And let's just double check while I'm here that our yeah our order is fine. Have after having us move out, uh, we are able to recruit. Except the only thing available at the moment is pretty low level troops. Hmm. Do I have anywhere nearby that I can get something better than this? Not really. I don't know that I can... Re oh, that's probably... That's the problem, is I can't afford anything better. That's part of the problem. So I don't know if conscripts uh, on this upcoming battle is even worthwhile trying to recruit anything. I could only afford one unit. They aren't that amazing and awesome. Yeah, not the most enthusiastic of soldiers is what the description describes him as. So we'll, we'll just make do with what we have here at the moment. And let's get over to the Indian Theater. And uh, we have to send some vessels over. These had been uh, 
these repaired Navy vessels here came from the East Indies, uh, but we are temporarily going to send them over to the Straits of Madagascar. Try and grab back a few of those trade nodes over there and kind of increase our ivory trade again. In fact, uh, just so we can hopefully grab as many nodes as are available, um, let's take the second ship here, the sixth rate. We'll just hope we can keep him blockaded with one vessel uh, in the port. That at least allows us to grab back for the meantime. In the meantime, um, some of those trade nodes over here that we lost early on. To the, I think it was Portugal that lost them to us. I think Spanish fleet is sitting here, but I think there might actually be four. I've lost track. It's hard to remember over time, but I think there, there's at least three, possibly four nodes still open over here. So we'll have those ships go over to try and grab some of those. Then as a reminder, we got this uh, Venice fleet right off the islands here, Trinidad and Tobago. The more than likely, I'm guessing they're gonna land next turn. Um, since my fleet is extremely overwhelmed by theirs we'll just have to wait till that landing happens and uh, wait till that fleet moves away because as long as that fleet is parked right there i have no access to this island here and then we have as a reminder our own fleet headed over towards venice to try and uh, cause some issues with them too. see if we can't blockade them in with their their lone port all right so uh, that's probably all we're going to do at this point i want to give this army a turn to replenish before we even think about an assault especially at the odds we're looking at uh, we've had some challenges before and this is a class a army uh, that we'd be dealing with in here with a lot well maybe not every unit but there's a lot of uh, line infantry in this army all right so we're going to take the next turn we'll see you on the other side if anything of interest pops up we will uh, interrupt of course as usual all right, something did happen, but not unexpected. If you recall last episode, they had moved down in this direction. Uh, we're just going to auto-resolve this one, and they will take back this territory, and then we'll see where we want to hit, hit and run to next uh, to keep the Mughal Empire running. All right, uh, right before this popped up, they're gonna, it looks like they're coming out of the walls, and I'm happy to oblige. Uh, they do outnumber us. I figure they figure uh, they're confident coming out against us, but we have artillery versus their uh, what would appear to be non-artillery. I don't know if there's any mortars that'll come with the city, but we can uh, deal with that if that's the case. So we got a battle ahead of us, and it'll be outside the city walls, actually, is what it should be. So let's get down there to the battlefield. All right, so here's the map. Nice green fields. Uh, the fort that they're coming out of in the background. Um, what I'm thinking is I kind of swept, swept around with a view before I, I, I uh, brought you guys on board. I've got a nice hill in the background. And since it's not like I need to battle in through these walls, I'm thinking we'll set up our artillery to give us nice range of the battlefield up high on this hill. And uh, I'll do that, and then once I get everybody else set, we'll come back and take a look at our setup. All right, we have our setup on the hill uh, with our main forces, our strongest line infantry, as far as uh, numbers are concerned, are more depleted and waiting for reinforcements will be held in reserve. That includes our grenadiers, yeah, over here. Um, the Regiment of Foot Scots, the Valdeck Infantry, uh, there's a regular line infantry there, and uh, Swiss Infantry. So a lot of our specialty units that we recruited are, are on the weak side here uh, that'll be holding up reserve. Now they have excess cavalry, and uh, that's one area we don't match up, uh, but we have our Regiment of Force here in the back ready to react depending on how they come at us. They are coming out of the fort, so they are technically the attacker. Uh, we're gonna have to be ready to convert to square formation uh, where necessary, depending on how they bring forward the cavalry. Uh, let's get this battle started. And there they are, way over on this side. Uh, well, they just got forces all over spread out, because let, let's face it, they do outnumber us a little bit. And let's get a sense for how far and what the range of our artillery is. 
Yeah, it basically comes over here, covers, barely covers the, the tip of the fort. Uh, wasn't worried about our range to the fort because they are attacking. They're coming out of the fort to attack us. And it looks like we have a big bunch of cavalry here over on the left. All right, there we got a big bunch of cavalry on the left and the right. So maybe an anticipation of their attacking. And they're finally in range. I can hear the cannon commencing. We're going to put our units over on the side. In fact, uh, two layers deep on this side in square formation to be ready because it looks like the cavalry uh, is coming out taking the, the point and let's get ready for them since they're the first ones that we will meet up with we'll keep the center out of square formation at the moment we'll go two deep square on this side advancing we saw of the cavalry uh, they've kind of slowed down they aren't breaking uh, breaking ahead like they were originally maybe they've noticed our conversion so we may end up uh, if too much infantry closes in first we're gonna have to to make some decisions here on how to how to hold our line as they enclose if they do the advance in unison, uh, infantry and cavalry, it's going to make our decisions a lot tougher. There's some cavalry pushing ahead, provincial cavalry. Okay, they can't really flank around too much. Uh, just in case we're going to get this unit over here. Oh, they can't move in square. Now let's just go back. We're gonna have to hang tough. I got my cavalry to bring up if they if they manage to start breaking through. Okay, we got our first cavalry units moving forward. They are coming through the center too, so I think we just gotta convert everybody to square at the moment. They're outpacing the the line infantry. focused on uh, the light infantry to help us out until we get out of square formation. Let's hold boys, here they come. Why are you not firing? Parring minds want to know. All up and down the front. The cavalry has been pushed back initially. We still got more cavalry to be pushing in. I do not like the idea of having to hold up against their line infantry in square formation with the quantity of uh, cavalry we're dealing with. I feel like that's just what I got to do for the time being. We'll kind of spread out our artillery fire a little bit on infantry units. We're wavering here. They're bringing in. That's, that's the best way to go against our line infantry. We're gonna have some hand-to-hand -hand combat now. In fact, we got grenadiers to support. Let's bring them up to do just that here in this section. We can convert back to regular line here. Still got cavalry over on this side. Got another unit provincial cavalry. 
we got square on this side, so we're okay. Thinking we gotta bring in the grenadiers to do what they do well. And let's get in close with these big guys. Just in case. We still got cavalry active on this side, so we aren't converting the lines yet. Little by little, we'll start converting out of square. As the cavalry goes this way against square. So our line is holding, they're weakening down. Uh, but I, the odds are we are not in fact that cavalry is going away let's get out of square we have some retreating units here looks like they've broken and cavalry time to bring them down over here I think uh, to support on this side Lot a little bit over here. Oh, that unit's weak. We're going to have them full on retreat. In fact, let's halt the cavalry. And let's work on some rundown in the center here. Try to keep as many as possible from uh, returning to the fort to where we have to attack them in the future. So our armed citizenry, we'll go against the militia. We know we can handle a charge with them. Alright, it's time to get out of square. The threat is going on this side. has taken out the militia oh my grenadiers oh my lord let's support the grenadiers and get them back they're exposed out here a little bit of a patchwork line over here on the corner with some heavy attacks holding tough right now now we're starting to see their numbers go down we're holding up okay and unfortunately the lack of cavalry shows up now Oof, they've recovered let's let's work on them broken through over here. Oh, we got someone else who's stood up. We're going to bring the Grenadiers out of there now. Time to get them out of here. We'll let the cavalry alone go against the armed citizenry to knock them out. And it looks like we have successfully repulsed them. Got the armed citizenry shattered. Let's move against 
uh, the line infantry so that nobody else needs to be faced. And is there any other units out there that I'm missing? Because this battle should be over with everybody in full retreat, it would appear. Ah, this unit over here. But we're addressing that. We're just going to end the battle here at this point. There's only, with only one cavalry unit out here, I really am not going to have the ability to run down and make much of a difference. So we're just going to end this victory here. Uh, they'll retreat to the walls, I'm, a sh I'm, I'm sure, uh, but they're not going to be in the, as good a shape as they had been uh, to hold off our attack. All right, in fact, they lost a whopping 3,643 soldiers in that battle. And uh, they only have remaining now 1,187 uh, compared to our 3,225. So um, the idea of an assault on those walls seems less daunting now. All right, and we also have finished our turn. And uh, the army lost is here in India. They've retaken their province here. Uh, what if we recruited a Protestant missionary in France? So we'll uh, send him out to a highly Catholic zone and uh, start the conversion there. And we know we lost region there. We expected that. And we advanced four field crop rotation. So we're going to be able to start improving some of our food cities. And what else have we got going? A unit recruited uh, down in uh, the Americas to help us out in our attack. And, and apparently, oh yeah, 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 it did happen. Sorry. In the Americas, they landed. And the fleet is still there for support. So we are going to lose this territory because I, I just won't be able to sneak in. It looks like their zone of control just covers me being able to get over there. So I will not be able to relieve our forces over here yet. And we're going to lose a territory temporarily at least. Let's just double check that. Yeah, there's the red. It makes it very clear uh, that we, we will not be able to access this island without a battle against the fleet, the mighty fleet of Venice. Uh, let's go take a look at some of our fleets that have arrived. Uh, some of them, like this one in the Americas, we we're looking to repair. And our income is amazingly healthy at 20,000, so we should be able to do what we want. And uh, we should have a number of fleets repaired now. In fact, let's just uh, highlight them all, repair the one we need, and send the other two back. Order. To the coast of Brazil. Other fleets arriving should be the Straits of Madagascar. Yes. We have our fleets here. Let's see what trade nodes are available for us to grab. And who else might have snuck in? Uh, so we got one trade node here. One trade node there. So far so good. Let's take a look down here. And they're both still available. So we got to come up with another fleet uh, to send down over here because we got one more trade note open. In fact, I think it's, uh, and we're gonna find out, I'm just gonna check. Yeah, the Spanish Navy has moved uh, to grab that note. So there still is one up for grabs. Uh, we're gonna see if we can't take it and come up with a vessel to do that. Uh, in fact, we don't have anybody coming back for repair, so let's just see about recruiting a good old flute. Well, actually, why don't we do a fifth rate because um, 
Yeah, I, I want to get there quicker just to make sure we grab that node before somebody else hopefully swoops on in. So we'll go with a little slightly more expensive flute just because we can get it in one turn. All right, we have an army here that we need to move out and at the same time get repaired. Actually, we can afford to sit there for a turn until they attempt to make a move at us. Uh, we've converted over 50% now over here, so that can't help them for public order. And we've got everything else destroyed just about. Back here we don't. we got a mine that's still active uh, that maybe we can uh, work on. Everything else is blockaded down here and looking good. Let's get out to the East Indies, see if there's any other ships we can send back for repair. No repair, so only this one apparently is requiring repair of this fleet. The fifth raid here, it says. Send back one of these flutes. And one of these flutes. Let's go back up to the continent here, and uh, we have a fleet on the move. See how close they can come to blockading Venice back in, and uh, hopefully, by doing that, aye, aye. drawing their navy back to unblockade <laughs> their port. I don't know if we're going to quite be able to make it in one move. No, we will not be able to make it all the way around the Italian peninsula, but uh, that's how we're moving. And we'll raid their sea trading route while we're at it. Oh, they got a fleet over here, though. Holy smokes! Oh, that's the Italian state, so thank goodness I panicked for a second, mistaking that for a Venice fleet. Uh, so we have an open port here uh, that we're going to try blockading here in a moment. Next turn. And then that'll hopefully draw back the fleet that's in the Americas. Going to bring our rake down in this direction uh, to keep an eye on Venice. And get a better read on their forces down here. Oof, look at all those cannon. <laughs> Do I even have any artillery? One piece down here. This force isn't meant to defeat them, it's meant to delay them. God will now here, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to maintain the siege for a little while while we... Uh, replenish a little bit and then we will try and finish the siege down here uh, we won't be waiting out the four turns I'm sure we'll, we'll be replenished before them and then we'll make the final push on Strasbourg uh, one thing I did notice up here though in the mid turn is uh, the Swedish have a naval ship that came out so they must have another port now available farther up that has developed where they can create ships. Uh, let's see, that's Russia. So all these ports are Russia, we're at peace. So it's, where would that other port be? Unless that ship was just hiding out up here. Up oh, there's a fishery. Can they, can you recruit a ship at a fishery? I didn't think so in the back of my mind, I'm saying no, um, but perhaps Oh, wait, 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 here we go. No, that's a major fishery also. In fact, I'm going to have to take a look at one of my own fish. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Lubeck Dockyard. They have another dockyard that is uh, built up right here that we're going to have to blockade also. we got two vessels in here of their navy. 
a brig and a fifth rate. Uh, we're going to block them in with day. just two fifth rates. Well, first of all, we're going to have a little naval battle uh, and say, hey, Swiss, Sweet, <laughs> yeah, not Swiss, but you Swedish, uh, take that. So let's get our forces so they can gather together. We're not doing an auto resolve. We've learned the disastrous results that naval auto resolves <laughs> it can give us. And uh, we'll meet you on the high seas here. This is a oh 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 yeah. We definitely got to take care of that port because they have the uh, abilities now for fourth rate ships of the line also. So we definitely got to take out that port. And that'll be priority one after <laughs> after we finish this battle. Let's just hope that four fifth rates can outnumber and take down, as they should, a fourth rate. So we'll see you on the high seas. All right, looks like we have a little fog to deal with here on uh, the ocean. Or, or I guess this is a, a sea, seeing as we're up in the Baltic area. We'll get lined up so we can take advantage of the wind. We will go in as a line to start with. We'll have the wind at our backs, depending on where he starts, unless he starts over here. Um, let's go find out. Kind of straight ahead, so we'll get our line going straight ahead to start out. And we'll determine when we want to break them all apart. And as we get closer, we'll see you back. All right, we're starting to get close to where we're almost going to be in range here. Uh, we'll start turning, bring our broadsides over. Yeah, so it looks like, and this is very important for us, that we'll be able to get off our first broadside, get the first a volley against a much stronger ship. Well, he is turning fast. So maybe we won't get that first volley off after all. But our school took some nasty hits. Our hits did not look as solid on return. Uh, what we will do is we will try running a little ring around the rosy here uh, as we move forward against this fourth rate. As long as his shots are going longer range, that's a good thing for us. Pretty soon now we're going to have two ships firing at once. The more ships I get, get firing uh, to outnumber his guns, the better. break we're gonna start manually uh, moving these ships Guns are down to 50. Ours are still at 48. Good news. And we're going to have to bring you around so we don't lose contact. And the rest of us are not keeping amazing pace here. Right now, he's managed to maneuver, so it's one-on-one, -on -one, which is to his advantage.
ship looks a lot more worse for wear, which I'm, I'm shocked. We're going to try some chain shot, see if we can't slow him down. Concerned about hull damage. And this, making him turn, is going to allow us to catch up. So let's get going. Let's get moving now. shot there which is good for him and now we're getting the rest of the guns where we wanted them have him faltering and routing. And victory, we're going to continue. I'll uh, bring you back once uh, we get him to surrender. And we got ourselves a decisive victory. He wasn't able to escape and weasel out of this one. All right, we are able to capture. We'll take on a fourth rate any day of the week. And now the most important thing is uh, we're going to take the fourth rate <laughs> and uh, come back and uh, destroy the port that way. <laughs> uh, we'll put our Navy back the way it was pretty much, uh, blockading him in. And unfortunately, no more surprise ports, at least not yet, not at the moment. Okay, it's a new turn. We can uh, see if we can make Adam's term as a cabinet member over India very brief and short. And still no upgrade. Uh, so we're, we're battling to find somebody. Now, this guy has army administration. One, two, three, four. I would match him with who's in there. Let's see if uh, the old George Washington portrait... Can be used anywhere else to our advantage no so there's really no change uh flipping those guys around so um no improvement yet again six turns to go with his meager cabinet all right so we had finished something which this one this one this one in orleans orleans finished and it's going to go up to improved animal husbandry under research yeah that's that's where we're going to go so I just want to make sure the new research uh, the, the AI chose for us is the appropriate one, and it is. All right, with a couple battles under our belt, uh, I think that puts together uh, a plenty plenty to, to take a look at in this mission, especially the first one back from the holidays. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it, and we're getting back in the flow. Uh, do me a favor, hit that like or dislike button. Leave me a comment. Let me know where we got to head out or what we got to do or what we can do better. Whatever you're seeing, let me know. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. This is ZigZagZog signing off from somewhere in this world. And uh, you all have a great one. Oh,